record this and I'm going to pass it to Chris and Dylan if you want to share your screens. Yeah, Chris, you want to go ahead and share? Will do. Thanks, Jen. Um, let me just share a screen here with Zoom. It's always fun when you got multiple screens going. <laughs> I'm going to try to put this into presentation mode. Um, do you folks see the main large slide or do you see the presentation screen? We see presentation. Okay, let me see if I can. <clears throat> All right, is that better? Yes. Okay. So um, thanks for having me today. Um, I know most of the folks on here, but for those that don't know me, I'm Chris Morris. I'm the State Trails Planner for New York State Parks. Um, you know, not only internal to parks uh, trail systems, we work uh, a lot with outside organizations like CDTC and PTNY on doing statewide trail planning. Um, the most recent of which was our uh, statewide Greenway Trails Plan completed in April of 2021. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the background and, and effort with that. And then I'm gonna talk about what we're doing uh, for implementation steps and some of the things that we're, we're partnering with with Parks and Trails New York. Um, and then a few other things that we're doing as an agency um, and then hand it off to Dylan who will get into a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of, of what we're talking about. Um, so again, the statewide Greenway Trails Plan um, was begun. Um, kind of largely as an effort to carry on the momentum of the Empire State Trail. Um, you know, we have an existing statewide trails plan. Uh, this is really focused on shared use paths, you know, greenway trails, bike trails, um, you know, the Empire State Trail being a good example, Albany Hudson Electric Trail, Mohawk Hudson Bike, uh, bike Hike Corridor, and, you know, some of the planned trails uh, for the area that, and across the state that are really important. Um, you know, we collected a, a GIS of existing plan and proposed trails across the state, kind of to set, um, you know, a benchmark and a, and a place in time for what was out there across the state and uh, make it usable for entities that, you know, maybe don't have the bandwidth to collect all of that GIS data, but want to plan around it uh, regionally. Um, and then there was a number of uh, working group meetings that we worked with, uh, you know, local elect or well I guess local um, municipalities, counties, uh, nonprofit partners, and also um, state agencies on developing the goals and implementation steps for the plan. And that was really um, one of the big pieces we wanted to, to capture as much of that as we could um, so that you know folks that are implementing or planning these trails uh, can look at those and and you know, kind of meet those needs and, and see what statewide uh, the goals and um, the goals really are for, for those types of trails, I guess. Um, so where we're at now really is implementation. Um, we've been uh, working on a number of different things. Um, one of the most important things that we heard about during those meetings was, you know, how important it was for cross communication, right? We, we had a lot of different groups a lot of different folks that were involved in the same type of initiatives, but you know we weren't meeting or maybe necessarily talking to each other uh, on a frequent basis. So we've been organizing quarterly meetings with Parks and Trails New York's help, um, and we've had everything from agency level down to some nonprofit partners participate in those meetings, and really is kind of an information share across the board. You know what is maybe DOT working on. What is, um, you know, um, Go Bike Buffalo or Erie County working on? Um, we've had some great presentations and discussion points on, you know, the Long Island um, Greenway Initiative, um, New York City, some of the trails in the Hudson Valley as well. Um, and so the other initiative that we're kind of working towards is, um, one of the things we're doing is a, is a kind of annual update for this plan as well. So um, we're working to kind of take that plan and just say, um, you know, what has happened in that last year and a half. So again, we've been collecting data on those calls and um, collecting information about, you know, grants received, miles of trail built, um, dollars invested, studies, feasibilities, things like that. So um, we're going to have that released as well for people to kind of see a snapshot as what's been going on in the last few years. Um, 
And another effort that uh, Dylan's going to talk a little bit about too is, um, you know, some of the more specific things that we can do with the group, what's important. Um, one of those that we identified was trail counts. You know, a lot of different organizations are doing trail counts across the state. How can we look at that statewide? Uh, not only kind of roll that data up to look at, um, you know, different counts and different metrics from different areas across the state, but um, how can we use that to our benefit to inform, you know, not only let's say statewide trails like the Empire State Trail, um, but, you know, more specifically, you know, trail use in New York, right? We have um, the, the difference, I think, from when maybe even within five years of doing manual counts on, on trails across the state to a lot of people are now using, um, you know, electronic counters. And how can we leverage that data? Um, because so many people are using that. Um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about our Parks Empire State Trail Program. Um, so as I mentioned, the Greenway Trails Plan released in 2021, um, the goals, I, I have the goal up, uh, the vision for the plan up there on, on the screen. And like I said, the goals and action steps are really, um, really a, a point in time from those meetings of you know what folks can kind of uh, aim towards when they're either doing, um, you know, corridor studies, where they might be putting money in their communities for trail development, um, and what's important from a statewide standpoint. Um, as we met, as I mentioned, we, we had worked with uh, Parks and Trails New York on those quarterly meetings. Um, and like I said, the uh, statewide trail counter data, summarizing that, um, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, one of the ideas that we've kicked around too is the statewide trail summit kind of uh, collecting all of these groups together and, you know, meeting in person and what can we learn from in-person meetings, um, you know, that might be beneficial to folks uh, that maybe don't make the calls or, or you know, we want to have uh, like tighter working groups or more, uh, you know, informational sessions or presentations. Uh, and like I just mentioned, uh, our Empire State Trail program with the agency, um, we've largely taken over the day-to-day -day operations from the Hudson River Valley Greenway. Um, you know, they were immensely successful in taking that, uh, you know, the governor's initiative and the dollars and implementing those with the help of DOT, Canal Corporation, and other partners um, to successfully ribbon cut the Empire State Trail um, a few years back. So uh, we have essentially taken on that responsibility because our purview is really statewide, Hudson River Valley Greenway. Um, you know, they, they operate in their geography um, and it made sense with the length of the trail for the state, you know, a larger state agency to take over the day to day. And what does that mean? It's really, um, we're responsible for uh, managing and updating the website that we have on there. Um, running that inbox and, and getting back to people and communicating with all of the folks that are really engaged about the trail. Um, really uh, making sure that all the trail closures and everything like that are up to date um, for folks that might be planning a trip. Um, we still get over 150 weekly or more uh, map requests from folks that are really, uh, really interested in in having that paper map in their hands. So I think that always speaks to the excitement that's out there. We've, uh, we get requests from, you know, every state across the, the country, uh, many from Canada, and we've received a few from out of the country, which unfortunately we really aren't able to, to send them across the globe, but um, it really speaks to the interest. And, uh, you know, just anecdotally, I, I probably answer you know, one or two emails a week for folks that are doing trip planning. So it really, really speaks to the, the um, kind of economic and tourism component of the trail as well. Um, you know, going forward, we're looking to do a lot of cross promotion. So, you know, um, sharing social media accounts, events that are on the trail um, and things like that. We're really hoping to grow um, with partners to communicate more about what's out there. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Uh, there's some links that are on the screen. Um, as I mentioned, the Greenway Trails Plan, uh, the GIS, the Master Plan, 
those are up on our website and available. Uh, if folks have any additional questions on that or you know want to take a deeper dive, you can email me directly. Um, Empire State Trail website is up there as well. Um, probably hold questions till Dylan's done, but um, anything you have, let me know. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, let me just get my screen share up now. Um, and sort of to Chris's point, you know, I'm going to have a lot of touch on a lot of the same things. Um, I think there's a lot of overlap that the two of us uh, covered on. Um, but just for those who don't know me, I'm Dylan Carey. I'm Greenway Program Director for Parks and Trails New York. Uh, we're a statewide nonprofit that does advocacy, promotion, stewardship, does kind of a, an array of things uh, related to the state's network of state parks, but also Greenway Trails specifically. Uh, and we were kind of, our advocacy efforts were really what helped get this, uh, the Greenway Trails plan to happen. Uh, we worked with uh, actually Assembly Member Fahey and then a number of other statewide legislative partners to get the Greenway Trails plan bill passed back in 2019. We then worked with OPRHP and a number of those, you know, the working groups. We helped do a public survey of Greenway Trail users to help complete that plan and get it ready for, for you know, to, to the finish line. Uh, and now that the plan's complete, we're getting into the, that implementation phase. And, and I'll go into a little bit more depth on some of the things that Chris kind of touched on that we're working in partnership on. Um, but first, I just wanted to talk, Chris mentioned the, the maps of the um, existing planned, proposed, and potential trail corridors. And I just wanted to share out kind of what that looks like, what the scope of, of this plan really could be. Um, so this just this is what's open already. This is what, uh, as of 2021, uh, what trails were open across the state. And then you add into that what's planned, what's proposed, and then some of these potential corridors. And you start to see just really the breadth of what's possible in terms of building out a network and ensuring that people in all parts of the state have easy access to some of these resources that, you know, I, I think here in the Capital District, we sometimes take for granted how great it is to have you know, the Albany County Rail Trail or the Mohawk Hudson Bike Hike Trail or, you know, some of the, the other uh, wide variety of trails that, that really are phenomenal around here. Um, you know, and, and the idea of the trails plan as well wasn't just to kind of start from scratch, but it really was to build off of the regional planning efforts that had already happened. Looking at documents like the Capital District Trails Plan that was uh, completed in 2019 and just kind of using that as the stepping stone to build out into a statewide plan, really aggregating those regional efforts uh, in, into one document. So um, as I mentioned, we're gonna kind of have some overlap with what Chris and I, I talked about, but just the uh, getting into the efforts that we have in the works currently. Um, so the first thing is the statewide Greenway Trails Plan Working Group. Uh, the group's really, you know, County and MPO level planners from around the state. We do have some state agency partners uh, as well as some nonprofit partners. Uh, Jen's joined a number of the calls that we've had for this. Uh, it's, it's a way to ensure that folks who, you know, folks are aware of what's happening in some of their neighboring communities to make some of those connections across borders, really to allow the participants to identify where there's opportunities for collaboration and to identify some potential challenges to, you know, building out these trail networks. Uh, kind of learning from one another as to what's worked in one place, being a clearinghouse for ideas, just a, an opportunity to make those connections and kind of also being a body that helps to, you know, support work done by state agencies to implement the Greenway Trails Plan. Uh, and as Chris mentioned, we've recently identified trail counts as an area of focus, uh, kind of understanding who is doing counts already across the state. You know, we've had a couple of instances over the past few months where PTNY had a counter up in one point at a certain place, and then the local MPO put a counter five feet away. This was out in Rochester. Uh, or I know up in Waterford, we had an instance where one counter was up for a while, and then CDTC put a counter up. And, you know, th that the need to have that kind of coordination, make sure that, you know, if we do want to be counting at the same place, great, but we should do that intentionally. Or if we want to make sure that our count efforts are being uh, kind of as optimized as possible that, that that's being handled. Um, and then also looking at the opportunity to um, kind of ensure that counts are being done consistently so that data is 
uh, kind of can be interchangeably understood uh, that you know we're collecting it in a consistent way. And then also looking at, this has kind of been a, a pet project of mine or a pet interest of mine, uh, kind of coming up with an extrapolation metric that more accurately reflects New York state conditions. There's the, the nationwide national bicycle and pedestrian demonstration project standard that uh, you know is used as a nationwide standard. But I think something we've seen is that our observed data doesn't doesn't uh, bear that that standard out. You know the the kind of trends that the standard call or would expect to see uh, aren't borne out by the the observed data we've collected. So trying to come up with something that is more accurate to a New York State condition. Um, the working group is also kind of helping to provide some information and feedback on the other two deliverables that PTNY and, and state parks are partnering on. The um, first thing is a, a new guide for the process by which a Greenway Trail gets built. Uh, Greenway Trails Plan Development Guide, we're calling it. Really that kind of overview and summary of, you know, here's the process. Something that would be a resource for everybody from, you know, MPO planners, county planners, local planners, to advocates, to, you know, anybody that, that's interested, uh, really, you know, kind of how you go from concept of, hey, there's this old corridor here, it would be great as a greenway trail, to that end product of here's this great new trail that, that's kind of ready for public enjoyment. And even beyond that into how what some of the kind of basic considerations for um, of stewardship and maintenance and, and kind of long-term care of, of those resources are. Uh, this is something that's, you know, the work on this is underway currently. We plan to release it in the second half of 2023, uh, but you can see on the screen some of the, the different factors and considerations we, we expect to, to kind of include in it. Uh, and then finally, just the piece that I'm going to kind of get into the, the greatest depth on, partially because it's the piece that's uh, the most complete at this point, is this annual report that Chris mentioned, just kind of discussing the uh, the Greenway Trails Plan and what progress is being made. And, you know, uh, we expect this to come out kind of later this spring or early summer. Uh, we do have a draft version complete that, that State Parks is in the process of reviewing. But basically, we expect it to highlight some of the major projects around the state that have advanced some major programming efforts, planning efforts, and then and some of the budget and legislative wins. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk through. We've, we've broken the report into different regions statewide uh, as a way to kind of aggregate and, and digest it. I'm going to highlight kind of one significant project or effort from each of the regions, just, you know, making sure that you guys are aware of some of these great, great efforts that are being, being made across the state. Uh, so in Long Island, um, there's been a big push to complete the Long Island Greenway as an extension of the Empire State Trail, but but one of the pieces that, that I wanted to highlight was this new North Shore Rail Trail. It's a 10 mile trail, paved trail. Uh, it's one, now one of the longest greenway trails on Long Island. Uh, sadly, Long Island doesn't have that much uh, by way of greenway trail. They're still using all of their old railroad corridors for the, the LIRR. Uh, but it really is a notable project because it's following a line that's owned by the utility, something that, that we also did here in the Albany Hudson Electric Trail. Uh, and it's something that you know, I think we'd like to see as, as a good precedent. Uh, you know, where are those other opportunities where utility corridors could be utilized as greenway trails and, and be those safe off-road connections? Uh, next, looking at New York City, and, and New York City's really kind of made a big push on their greenway trail network. They got a, a over $7 million federal raise grant for a planning effort on expansion of the network, specifically focused on those historically underserved lower income communities uh, I think they're, they're planning to start with efforts in the Bronx and on Staten Island. Um, and this uh, is building on top of 80 million in kind of locally funded projects that, that the city announced last year. Building some new greenway segments along the Brooklyn waterfront and in central Queens, uh, along those, the central Queens, Queens Greenway, and then building phase one of the Queensway, which is a proposed seven mile rail trail that would cut through six neighborhoods in central Queens in, in an area that's really kind of underserved by, by bicycling infrastructure and underserved by, by park infrastructure. And moving up into the Hudson Valley, uh, the Open Space Institute, a good close partner of ours, released this Growing Greenway Trails Vision Plan earlier this year. 
outlined that there's an opportunity for a 250 mile network of greenways in Ulster, Orange and Sullivan counties uh, west of the Hudson. Uh, and that would build on some existing trails like the Wallkill Valley Rail Trail, the O&W and D&H Corridor Rail Trail, um, the, the Ashokan Rail Trail that's part of that Catskill Mountain Rail Corridor, uh, and then connect it with some, you know, closing the gaps and extending some of those trails, and then building some new trails like the Shanamunk Rail Trail to kind of help build out the network that, that you know, that's envisioned. The report doesn't just look at kind of the, the broader kind of network wide region wide planning efforts. It also highlights, you know, key links and key key, you know, projects that are critical in getting those those networks and those corridors and projects built. And, you know, and obviously the one here that that stands out is the Livingston Avenue Bridge project. Uh, you know, and and I imagine many of you, if not all of you on the call, know about the the plans for the replacement. But uh, you know, looking at how that project would help tie together the Empire State Trail, uh, serve as a key link, uh, and really connect the two communities on either side of the Hudson. Then moving north into the Adirondacks, uh, another exciting project that's underway is the Adirondack Rail Trail. Uh, it's a 34 mile proposed recreational trail on a former rail bed. Uh, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation is in the process of constructing it right now. Uh, the total trail is set to be done by 2025. Um, and then beyond that, there's some efforts by local groups, the Adirondack Rail Trail Association and the Open Space Institute I mentioned earlier, working to kind of ensure that these communities along it are kind of ready for when it's done, that they're working to get the businesses in the community kind of prepared and, and to serve as advocates for the trail and, and you know, for the communities along the trail. Uh, the trailheads are, are completed and ready for, um, you know, for welcoming the, the visitors that they expect. You know, and then again, looking at again some of those those connections as we kind of move out into to central New York, um, you know, there a significant project uh, in the Ithaca area is the Dryden Rail Trail Bridge, uh, which when it's complete would help build a 14 mile network of of existing rail trails, effectively connecting two two currently separate rail trails. Uh, into that 14 mile uh, corridor running from Ithaca uh, East into the town of Dryden. Uh, and this is a significant project because uh, it really built on some other funding sources and then benefited from a, an earmark from congressionally directed funding from Senator Gillibrand, a $700 investment. And then the last project I wanted to highlight is just kind of looking out into the Western part of the state uh, the Genesee Valley Greenway. Uh, this is a 90 mile rail corridor that uh, PTNY actually works very closely with state parks and, and other local partners on. Um, and there's three major projects that are either recently completed or, or soon to be uh, kind of underway. Uh, the first is resurfacing of 17 miles of the trail, the northernmost 17 miles between Rochester and Avon. Uh, and just last year, they received a, a, a grant for the construction of four pedestrian bridges uh, in the southern end of the trail in Allegheny County, where it's very disconnected and very sort of not utilized well as, as a, a continuous trail corridor. This project would, would help allow it to be that continuous, well-used trail corridor. Um, they also acquired a 17-mile rail corridor that ran adjacent to, to the corridor that is currently the Greenway. Um, and that can provide an alternate routing because there's some sections there that have been washed out and are impacted by uh, some, some beaver activity. And, um, you know, having that that parallel corridor really provides options either for loop hikes or for kind of avoiding those those washouts and other things that have uh, kind of negatively impacted the trail. So just kind of moving beyond some of the, the more pure, like here's this project that's being completed or here's this planning effort. We did also look at some of the more programming efforts, uh, programming initiatives. Um, one thing we've highlighted is that there's been this proliferation of trail town programs across the state, uh, something that PTNY is, is definitely largely responsible for, I'd say, uh, as two of the ones I have listed here are ones that we're directly involved with. Um, the Empire State Trail Town Program that, that we launched last year, uh, we worked with Brockport as the pilot community on that. Uh, and we're expecting to select uh, three new communities along the Erie Canal Trail to be Empire State Trail towns this year. Uh, we also invite, you know, highlighted some events and programming. Many of you know that PTNY runs uh, the Cycle the Erie Canal Tour every year. 
Um, hopefully you'll all have heard by now, but uh, if not, I'm here to share that for this year, we're relaunching our Cycle of the Hudson Valley Tour. It's going to run at the end of July, beginning of August, and go from Albany down to New York City uh, over a seven-day stretch. And then a number of other resources. Chris mentioned the Empire State Trail website, uh, as well as some of the other programming that's being put on by state agencies and, and other partners and uh, you know, program or promotional resources like the cycling guidebooks that the PTNY sells. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, I mentioned briefly the funding for uh, for the one project that came from Senator Gillibrand's office. Uh, we wanted to highlight the wide array of funds that have gone uh, over the past couple of years to support Greenway Trail planning and expansion efforts, looking at everything from some of the federal funding uh, that I saw from Jen's uh, agenda that is going to be discussed later on today. Um, you know, some of the the other sources that I know some regions in the state have used some of their coronavirus uh, recovery funds to support trail projects, uh, something actually Ulster County's done. Uh, and then those those earmark projects, um, been more than 10 million across the state that have come from the congressionally directed spending to support Greenway Trail projects over the last two years. Uh, and then also looking at some of the state funding, these are things that PTNY and a number of uh, partners have helped to advocate for. Um, last year's capital or last year's state budget included 25 or 250 million in capital funding for parks. And Chris would have to be the one to tell us how much of that is used for Greenway Trails, uh, but also the 400 million Environmental Protection Fund. Uh, and then the, the kind of big elephant in the room is in terms of spending is the $4.2 billion Clean Water, Clean Air, and Green Jobs Environmental Bond Act. Now, most of that is for is earmarked for other purposes, but there is a, a huge opportunity for some of that funding to be used to help expand the state's Greenway Trails Network. Uh, and I think all of you understand the importance in uh, promoting opportunities for active transportation in helping to uh, create a healthy environment and provide clean water and clean air. Uh, so there's a lot more that I could get into. Um, you know, we'll have the report complete in the next couple of months and, you know, we can share it with Jen, share it with all of you, or if you're not on PTNY's email list, I would encourage you to sign up. Um, you know, we're looking forward to, to having that complete. But um, yeah, from that, I think, you know, we can go into questions. I've seen a couple come in in the chat. Um, Tom asked about the statewide map showing blanks for the on-road portions. Yes, I had it as blanks for the on-road portions, specifically wanted to highlight those stretches that were the uh, off-road greenway trails. Um, if there was a separated bike uh, facility that, that provided kind of a, a separate opportunity, um, we would not have, you know, we would have shown that on the map. That's general my, my, generally my feeling around uh, trails. Um, to Martin's point, uh, Martin asked about the utility right of ways. Um, to my knowledge, the state has not, and we have not yet. It's one of the things that I very much would like to do, but have not yet had the time uh, to be able to do that. Um, but it's definitely something that's, at least uh, on my mind, is, is an opportunity. Any other questions? All right. Well, oh. thank you for giving. Dylan, it's Martin. I have one more. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> we're, we're playing mute bingo. I could, or for playing Zoom bingo, I couldn't find the unmute button. <laughs> um, so check that square off. I, I wondered. I, I love the the concept of working with utility providers to develop yeah. trails, especially when it comes to um, public benefits for essentially what is a what is a taking of, of property for for that for that use. Uh, have you guys or the state has involved the Public Service Commission? in some of those types of conversations about expanding the trail network on utilities? Not yet, to my knowledge. We've identified them as somebody that we need to mm -hmm. uh, involve, but I don't think those conversations have happened quite yet. Um, we have had some good promising conversations with National Grid, and they definitely seem uh, kind of willing to listen and, and open to the concept, um, which is promising, but we've not yet had the conversations with the PSC. Um, okay. Chris may, may share in, that they've had you know, state agencies are always talking more than they, they share with all of us, but um, yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you're aware of this, this uh, really ambitious um, uh, transmission line that's going to be 339 miles from Canada all the way down to New York City 
seems like a good opportunity to uh, encourage some trail development on the on all the disturbance that's going to be taking place from that. Yeah, it's something I know that the Champlain Canal Trail Working Group had identified as well mm-hmm. as something that could support their efforts. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't heard any kind of movement on that. Okay. Well, thanks for the presentation. Really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, Dylan. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the response. Um, I'm assuming somewhere, uh, well, obviously the Empire State Trail map shows um, the completed uh, uh, trail, uh, whether on-road or off-road. But I was just wondering if uh, if any of that shows, uh, I know some accommodations were made, whether it was deciding that there was a sufficient shoulder or... Um, you know, doing uh, some sort of uh, markings and whatnot at various locations. But I was wondering if anybody showed, you know, those those measures. Um, um, to my knowledge, the Empire State Trail maps that we have either just sort of delineate on road or off road, and okay, that, right. that there is uh, yeah. anything comprehensive that specifies exactly what kind of measures are, are provided on the different sections. Yeah. Um, you know, and then obviously beyond the Empire State Trail route, I don't know of any mapping efforts across the state that have tried to uh, kind of capture all of that. Information. Yeah. I, I know it's a question I used to get. But I used to, uh, Chris mentioned people calling doing trip plannings. I used to get yeah. some of those phone calls and that's something people would ask is, you know, how are the roads? How are they marked? Yeah. Um, you know, that that type of thing. Uh, if you got a second, too, I'd like to can you say a little bit more about the Empire State Trail communities? You know, what's going on? Yes. What kind of things you're doing there? Yeah. So this is a new program. Uh, yeah. Really, the, the Trail Town program concept is trying to get the communities along a, a, a trail um, to basically take better advantage of and benefit from their proximity to the trail. Really, a lot of it focused on those long distance visitors, those people coming in from out of town to use a trail and how you can ensure that the people who are using that trail are then spending their money at the the shops and businesses in the community. Uh, Really, it was modeled after the Great Allegheny Passage from Pittsburgh to Cumberland, Maryland. Um, We, in in working with Brockport, we kind of identified a series of measures that that community could take um, to... uh, you know, to basically do what I said, kind of advance some, uh, improve some of the safety for bicycling and and walking in their community, uh, some programming efforts that they could take to kind of strengthen that, that uh, community connection uh, and community understanding of the trail as a resource and of the potential of uh, of the trail as kind of a tourism uh, destination. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea that you should be able to walk into any business on Main Street and say, you know, how do I get back to the trail? Uh, I need to go, you know, I'm looking to, for somewhere to camp for the night. I'm looking for, uh, you know, public restrooms or a bike rack or, you know, a, a bike pump. Um, and that folks in some of those businesses can tell you that and that, you know, that there are some of those resources to kind of uh, counter share. Um, we're in the process still of kind of uh, collecting uh, interest from communities for 2023. Um, we've selected a series of communities that we think are uh, good fits for the for the project that that you know we've invited to apply. Um, those applications are due to us by the end of this week, so we should know which three communities we're working with um, later this month or early next month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm interested, of course, from a safety standpoint. How do you get the trail users uh, safely uh, off the trail to uh, you know businesses or places thinking also about com- uh, local commuters you know how do you get off uh, to get the businesses um, and just things to pick up your your daily uh, you know your daily living uh, needs yeah yeah I think yeah. in a lot of these communities just sort of identifying where those pinch points are those pain points and highlighting some of the need to address them uh, you know, in many of them, they haven't had somebody come in with the perspective that we have of, hey, look through, look at these communities through the eyes, eyes of, uh, of, you know, a visiting cyclist and see what's there and see what we can, you know, what you can do to kind of help improve upon. 
Yeah, um, maybe opportunity for uh, education. I mean, I have some sense, you guys may know better than me, but uh, trail users and getting off the trail and getting to Stewart's or wherever uh, yeah. might be a challenge for some cyclists without the, um, some additional education and yep, on safety. So. Yeah, um, and one just clarification point on that. This program is currently only uh, available for communities on the Erie and Champlain Canal trails because it's fund we're funded to do it by the Canal Corporation. Uh -huh. um, but it is something that we potentially would hope to expand to the entirety of the Empire State Trail in the future. Cool. Thanks, ma'am. Yep, definitely. I just wanted to let folks know I'm back. If you had any questions, I lost power for a few minutes and Wi-Fi, so miraculously back up and running. But um, <clears throat> if not, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, if Chris and Dylan, if you guys both send me your presentations, I can include them in the notes so that some of these links and references, um, you know, folks can can take a look later on. Yeah, definitely. I know some other folks have dropped off. Um, I'm guessing they've lost power. Um, so don't want to, uh, oops, okay, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> my screen went away. Um, so yeah, so it looks like we, we have lots of couple people and I am hearing from people in the op not in the office, but working at home that they're losing power. So um, in the interest of hopefully people not losing power and us getting disconnected, I do want to keep going. But thank you so much, um, Dylan and Chris. I think that, you know, there's a lot going on with trail planning and um, staying staying kind of updated is important. Um, so I'll, I'll try to do my best to keep everyone updated and hopefully you guys can keep joining us when there's other big updates. Okay, so um, continuing on regional trail planning, um, I just wanted to pr provide some updates on what CDTC is working on. And we have Rebecca Odell from our office who's gonna give a um, just a short update on the, our online trail mapping application that we are working on. You're muted, Rebecca. Thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, so we are working on putting up a database of multi-use trails in the capital region. Um, this is something I did when I was working at parks, but it's nice to have a smaller focus so we can get some of those smaller trails. Um, and right now, um, mostly just going through and getting all the use information that we can get. Um, and hopefully we're looking at rolling out something in April when we're seeing an increase in trail use. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, yeah, and this online trail map is really going to replace um, CDTC's printed trail maps. They We did those for a long time. We maintained um, those for a long time. They were very popular. I'm not surprised, Chris, that you get like 150 requests a month for for, for a trail map. Um, they were our most popular requested uh, document from CDTC, but it's really difficult to keep, to keep, to keep up with them um, because of the pretty rapid um, work that's done on our regional trail network and how often it, that map needs to be updated and then reprinted. So we are shifting to an online application and we hope that you know it's a good resource for, for, for users and then also for the municipalities. Um, and then we are getting ready for the spring, fall 2023 trail count season. So I have developed a form, which I'll share the link with everyone um, in the notes so that if you are, if you would like a trail count conducted on a trail that you own or maintain, um, or maybe you're an organization that is working with a community um, that owns or maintains a trail and you're looking for some trail use data, 
we have a form that you can fill out. And we, as we develop our schedule for this um, upcoming spring season, we will um, do our best to fit them all in. Um, we do have three counters now. So we hope to be able to rotate these three counters on about a two week you know, counting schedule throughout the region as we can. Um, and then we'll continue to work with Parks and Trails and OPRHP on, you know, finding kind of that standard or standard way of doing use estimates and, and also coordinating with them to make sure that we're not double counting a location um, and that we're all sharing the data so that we, so that we have um, that data at, at the end of each year and we can compile it and compare it across the state. Um, so. Um, okay, so moving on in the agenda to the discussion items, just an update on the 2023-2024 Unified Planning Work Program, or what we refer to as the UPWP. It was adopted at the March Policy Board meeting. Um, so the details of this of um, this program can be found on the CDTC website. You can read the full document. There'll be a summary document, but I just kind of pulled out, and this was in last month's uh, meeting presentation as well, just some of kind of like the key points that you might be interested in. Of course, um, in that federal funds table, you'll see that SS4A um, item that is our Safe Streets for All grant. That is um, a from Federal Highways. It we applied as uh, for the Safe Streets for All program, which is part of the bill, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, and our region was awarded a um, million dollar grant. So we will be working to do a safety kind of enhance our existing local road safety plan, um, do kind of a better safety analysis. Um, a more enhanced safety plan for the capital region. The new uh, linkage types of projects that we are doing in this upcoming um, UPWP is a town center plan for the town of Milton, a complete streets feasibility study for the village of Castleton on Hudson, um, a complete streets study for the village of Borisville, a uh, Broadway multimodal resilient corridor study for Albany County. Um, a uh, for Town of Rotterdam, we're doing a real traditional, um, you know, land use and transportation linkage type of study. And then the Town of Colony that is looking at Route Five West, so from New Carner Road to the um, Schenectady. Uh, to the Niskayuna line and how you can look at that corridor, improve safety, mobility, um, and, and integrate it with land use and potential economic development there. So um, some new communities that we haven't worked with before or just haven't worked with in a long time, um, like Boysville, Castleton, and Hudson, and Milton, and we're really excited to work with, with them. And then um, some pretty, you know, big studies like the Albany County and Town of Colony projects. Um, and again, the Bridge New York uh, last meeting, I shared these tables. These were the proposed um, bridge candidates and these were approved and will be added to the tip. Um, And okay, and then for bike month, we um, have some updates. Rima, are you still on the call? Yeah, of course. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I think uh, James Rath is also on the call. So I think um, he could give a quick update about um, bike to work day plans. Um, James, would you like to do that? Yeah, sure. You guys can hear me, right? Yes. Um, well, just a, a quick update on what's going on with me and what Capital Streets is, I think would be helpful background. We're a new regional nonprofit focused on complete streets, active transportation, public transportation issues um, here in the capital region. So I've been on these calls for 
years and then went away for a little bit, but now I'm back with a different hat on. Um, yeah, and we're taking on we're taking the lead on Bike to Work Day uh, with CDTC, looking to kind of transition it over to a community organization. Um, and what we're looking at doing, it's still um, being solidified, but our plan is to do something broader than one, just one day, um, hopefully three or four days. Bike to Work Day this year is on May 19th, which is a Friday. And we know um, a lot of folks are not excited about going to the office on Fridays in general. So we're looking on, on doing something um, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday through Thursday, hopefully, uh, and, and focusing on main commuting corridors, um, having a little pop-up tent, a uh, little celebration, some giveaways, um, refreshments, that sort of thing for folks who are commuting as a reward, but also as a way to uh, make that commute a little bit more comfortable, especially for folks who aren't um, doing that every single day or not as, not as used to it. Um, we are, we're, we're happy to work with other groups as well. So if you are, you know, in a specific community and want to team up, or if you uh, have an employer who's really engaged and excited about bike to work, um, feel free to reach out. I can drop my email in the chat. And uh, I should add also that we are, we're looking for sponsors um, to jump on and, and help support our work. Um, the more support that we get, uh, the more that we'll be able to do for the event. So uh, at, the, at the minimum, we're looking at, at one core uh, event in one location. But if we did get uh, broader support, we could, uh, we'd, we'd really love to have something in all of the, the main employment hubs, you know, something in Schenectady and Troy, as well as, as Albany. Thanks, James. Um, so uh, other bike month events, um, activities, um, walk and roll to school. Um, we've um, typically had um, sort of um, in conjunction with our bike to work day um, activities. So we'll be um, promoting a walk and roll um, to school in May as well. Um, we developed a walk and roll to school toolkit for schools uh, last year. So we'd just be tweaking that a little bit, updating it and reissuing it um, and uh, promoting that to schools and just reminding schools that, you know, that there's a toolkit out there and that they can be, um, you know, thinking about um, ways to be, you know, getting their students out there and walking and rolling. Um, and then in sort of in conjunction with that, we've um, been working on revamping our offerings for um, safety and education um, giveaway items. And um, I'm in the process of redesigning the job form um, for requesting those items. So the walk and roll to, cool, to school toolkit and the job form for those giveaway items um, the goal is that those will be ready to, to be released uh, next month in April so that people can be um, using those, those materials uh, for their events in May. Um, and we also have the, the bike safety trainings um, that are going to be getting underway uh, starting like possibly late April, um, but most likely in May as well, and going on through the uh, summer and uh, fall. Great. Thanks, Remo. Yep. Um, <clears throat> oh, and James put his email address, contact info, um in the chat if you're interested in getting more information on capital streets um so just a reminder that cdtc is still maintaining and updating the web page on the bipartisan infrastructure law the bill some um 
uh, current and upcoming um, opportunities that I wanted to highlight um, or just you know kind of talk about. Again, the State Street for All grant, CD, the Capital Region received a grant in the last round um, and the grant is expected to be reopened April, 2023. Um, the Promoting Resilient Operations for Transformative, Efficient and Cost-Saving Transportation or a PROTECT program is expected to open winter, spring, 2023. Um, the New York State DOT did come out with some criteria with, uh, for the PROTECT program. Um, so we're waiting on details. This would be um, kind of like bridge and culvert and resiliency types of projects. The Reconnecting Communities Program and Neighborhood Access and Equity Grant Program is also expected to open in late spring of this year. And then the Carbon Reduction Program. Um, New York State is currently working on developing a statewide plan. Um, so once this plan is, um, and it, they're doing it in coordination with the MPOs. So really laying out strategies for reducing carbon in New York State. A lot of the types of programs that the MPOs have discussed with DOT are really similar to like TAP and CMAC types of projects. So trails, um, complete streets, bike ped, um, but then also, you know, electric vehicles and vehicle technology types of projects, ITS types of projects, um, really a wide range of strategies that reduces carbon emissions from transportation. Um, and there's two parts to that program. Um, so there will be funds that are dedicated just to the, cap the CDTC MPO area and that are programmed. Um, so we are expecting to do a round of programming sometime potentially late spring of this year. And as we get more information and more details and criteria, we'll definitely share them with everybody. The Metropolitan Transportation Plan, um, what we've referred to as New Visions, um, we are starting the update to this plan, this UPWP. So we expect to adopt a new metropolitan transportation plan in the fall of 2025, but we need to start doing this update now. Um, so with this will also be a complete rebranding of the name of the plan. We've been using the term new visions for a very, very long time. And um, it is time to really revamp that and rethink that and redo this plan from the bottom up um, not just like a, a minor update, but really, you know, look at the conditions of the region, collect data and do really um, uh, enhanced and expanded public outreach and participation um, to, to develop a new plan. Um, with this also CDTC itself is rebranding itself. Um, if you have been to a planning committee or policy board meeting recently, you've heard that our administrative and finance committee has asked that we um, rebrand. So new name, we'll be getting a new logo, really set ourselves apart from, you know, CDTA or some of the other organizations in the region that we often get confused with. Um, so we'll be known as the Capital Region um, Area Transportation Council, and we'll be doing business as a transportation council. So for now, you'll will be CDTC and you'll recognize us as CDTC, but in the next few months, we will be making a transition um, with a different name. So with that, we'll also be rebranding and renaming our long range plan. So um, it, it, things will be interesting for a little while. Um, and then our last New Visions virtual learning series webinar will be this month. Um, we do need to start kind of doing different kinds of uh, virtual interactive events to prepare for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Um, so we won't be continuing that webinar series. And just because of today's weather, I just wanted to remind everyone um, of the snow removal policy map that um, Rebecca and our interns have worked on to develop 
you can find it on the active transportation webpage. It's linked right there. Um, and I wonder if I can put this. Oops, sorry. Trying to find a way to copy it and put it in the chat. Um, if anyone, if Rebecca, maybe if you can drop the link to it in the chat, that would be great for everyone. Um, it might come in handy today, but it'll help you find um, what the policy for your municipality is for snow removal, who's responsible and how long you have to clear that snow. So just a quick review of some of the ongoing um, planning studies that are su currently supported by CDTC. We're either wrapping up or have recently completed a number of projects, including the Village of Manan's um, land use regulations update. The Rensselaer Waterfront Connectivity Study is wrapping up, as well as the Federal Street Corridor Study. Um, we've heard about both of those projects here um, at the Active Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, Route 4 Corridor Study um, and the Town of Brunswick Cusick Road Corridor, Corridor Study are still moving along. Um, the Sand Creek Road Complete Street Fe Feasibility Study is still somewhat early um, in its stages. And then the Albany Schenectady, the Schenectady, Albany and Crane Streets Linkage Study is also moving forward. And there will be some public um, engagement opportunities uh, this spring. We're continuing to work on the CDTC, CDRPC technical assistance program. So we have a number of projects that are about to um, wrap up um, over the next month or so. And then of course, some of our regional projects like the bus lane feasibility study is complete. We are working with DOT on the 378 bridge transportation and scoping um, study, a regional truck parking study. And we recently completed the Albany County Loop Trail feasibility study. Um, and we'll, I'm going to ask Albany County, if you know we're able to kind of share the um, final findings of that project with the Active Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, we have some new ADA uh, transition plan projects starting. Um, and then of course, we'll be working closely with DOT on the Reimagining 787 study. And then we're also doing a lot of data collection um, and other types of projects. Jen, can I just uh, add something real quick? Sure. The Minans linkage uh, zoning update, just wanted to uh, say that they, oh, just a week or two ago, the village board did adopt those um, proposed amendments that were developed in the linkage study. So they actually implement, already implemented um, the recommendations uh, that came out of that linkage study. Thanks, Rima. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I saw in the chat, Tom asked for a link to the bill webpage. So I, I put that there um, and And Rebecca did put the uh, snow removal map link um, in the chat for anyone who wants to take a look. I'll make sure that those are also included in our notes for today's meeting. Um, so it is just a little after 10. So we have a couple of minutes if anyone wants to go around and give an update on something that they're working on. Anyone have any updates? I know earlier, um, Charles Welge at the Albany County Department of Health noted that the uh, Department of Health has a Governor's Traffic Safety Committee grant to promote pedestrian safety. Jen, I could give a, a little bit of a broader update on Capitol Streets, if that's helpful. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, so uh, just a little background briefly. Um, this this evolved from an idea that Kyle Hatch and I um, had in 2019, and there was a meeting that we had where Jen, I know you were there, and a handful of other folks um, from this group showed up. And fast forward, you know, three years later, after the the pandemic lockdown and everything, we are launching a new nonprofit. So um, very in line with 
what a lot of folks are coming to this meeting for or, or about. Um, and we're having a launch event on uh, the 30th at the Focus Lab in Troy um, to give a broader presentation about our, our, about our group. Um, Jeff Olson will be there speaking. Um, Andrew Neidhart from Walkable Albany will be there speaking. And then we're having a little bit of a networking and happy hour session um, at Rare Form Brewing afterwards. So the event is at 6 p.m. The happy hour is at 7 p.m. And the event is really for uh, advocates, activists, people who are concerned or interested in active and public transportation issues, livable streets issues uh, in the region. It's not necessarily geared towards uh, well, government officials or staff people, but y'all are welcome. But we're not um, we're not trying to create an environment where people are like coming at you with a bunch of questions or anything like that at this meeting. Um, we likely will have another another session that's more geared towards uh, government employees and that sort of thing in the future. And maybe we'll give a presentation to this group at some point. But um, really excited to be making a lot of progress and launching officially as an organization. Thanks, James. Hi, and this is Ben from Albany County. I can give an update on that traffic safety um, grant. That'd be great. Sure. So thanks. So um, you know, the team, the team actually, uh, some folks on here actually helped us with some crash data, and what we're trying to do is identify some of the the most dangerous spots up and down Central Ave from Albany right into Colony, and we're going to work with um, CDTA and Lamar Advertising, and we're gonna do our campaign for um, C and B Scene. Working on that, trying to get that out in spring. We've also identified um, about 10 or 12 different after-school programs where we're gonna go in and work with the kids on um, pedestrian safety. Um, we're trying to make it fun. We're working with the YMCA after-schools here up and down Albany right into um, Colony and even Gilderland to try and get kids to really understand the importance of using the crosswalks, importance of, you know, putting the phones down. So we have some, some different programs we're doing within that. We also have different giveaways, slab bracelets, reflectors, um, Velcro, uh, you know, Velcro, um, like sticky reflectors for backpacks. We're actually putting in another order for, for certain stuff. That's all gonna take place in the spring. But uh, yeah, anybody, if anyone has any relationships with any camps or um, after school programs, you know, I know there's some, a, a few um, charter schools up and down that area too. So we're really trying to reach out before, you know, when the snow hopefully melts, we know everyone will have spring fever and we just wanna get ahead of um, that as, as much as possible before before I have, I have a 13 and an eight year old and I know that everyone gets so excited. So we just wanna make sure everyone is prepared for crossing the street safely and, and looking out for cars and cars are looking out for our community members, so. Thanks, Ben. Um, Jen, do you mind if I just speak to Ben? Thank you for that information on your, your grant and your deliverables, uh, but I, I just want to um, bring to your attention, and I'm sure you already know, but Bill Van Alstyne with the Albany, um, uh, the City of Department of Public Works, he's a, a tremendous resource there in getting into those schools in, in the City of Albany. Um, so I don't know if you've been in touch with him as well, that, you know, pre-pandemic, he was in there doing the school assemblies with, you know, the in, in grades K through five. I know that, Jen, you've, you've come along with, with, you know, those school programs when they were in process. Um, and I hope that I know that I, I think I sent Charles the the K through five video our new video that we have in our toolkit of resources. So anything you need Ben from us, please let me know. Oh yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. This is my first year running this grant, so I'm actually yeah. excited to kind of dive yeah. in. So I appreciate. Yeah, no, that. please please call anytime. And we also Christina's on the phone. We may have some additional like CNBC and reflective um, uh, buttons that we could provide you with if we have them in stock. Oh, that would be wonderful. And in moving forward, we are going to come out with some coloring books to complement in both Spanish and English that will complement our new K through five video. All right. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad I spoke up. So Jen, this is uh, Charles Welchie. I just wanted to follow up on that. 
and I'll send you a note uh, separately. So maybe we can uh, also complement the supplies that you're going to get your giveaways uh, ourselves with supplemental funds. The sure. second thing is, um, could you update us, if possible, on the Patroon Creek Greenway? Um, sure. Earlier? So, um, as um, folks know, the Patroon Creek Greenway feasibility study was completed late last year. Um, the study has been presented to the CDTC policy board. Um, it is a definitely, um, if there was recently a series in the business review called like Elevate Albany and the Patroon Creek Greenway was mentioned as one of those kind of like big impact, high uh, price tag items um, in the region. CDTC obviously is still, you know, we're, we're working with our members. We are trying to identify a champion, a sponsor and potential funding opportunities. It is a project that, um, it, I mean, it's going to require something, you know, uh, it's going probably going to need a large scale grant like those in, in the bill. Um, and some parts of it can be done incrementally over time, um, particularly like the, some of the on-road portions in the city of Albany. And a lot of them are connecting to like ongoing projects that are that are happening right now, like some of the DRI stuff on Clinton Avenue and the anticipated replacement of the Livingston Avenue Bridge. It, you know, the Patroon Creek would is expected to connect to that. Um, so we obviously, we, we continue to bring that project up and, um, we're, we're always looking for opportunities to implement it. Um, it's just CDTC can't, we're unable to initiate a project like that, um, constructing it. So, but we are still working with Albany County, City of Albany, um, Town of Colony, and, you know, any opportunity we have to remind folks about that plan and that trail, we're doing that. Um, so Ed uh, Brennan from Albany Bicycling Coalition had a couple of comments. One, the Capital Region Vision Zero Alliance has a new website to track traffic, regional safety related infrastructure projects, legislation and activism. So he dropped that link into the chat um, and they welcome anyone with updates to send them their way. Um, and Ed also commented that Patroon Creek phase one seems natural for reconnect reconnecting communities grant requests. Um, yep, I agree. that could definitely be a an eligible project. So Patroon Creek still remains one of our key, you know, projects for the region. <clears throat> Does anyone else have any updates? Um, I just want to add a uh, pile on to the uh, interest that Ben is getting about um, talking about uh, safety giveaways. Um, ben, I, I'd love to follow up with you um, and compare notes about um, what you guys are giving away, because um, that's something that we've been you know, we we do safety giveaways as well. So I'd be really interested to see what you guys are giving away. Um, and sort of compare notes on that. Um, yeah, definitely. I think Charles put my email in in the chat there. Yes. Um, so I'm having a hard time like <laughs> seeing who's talking because our stuff's not on. Sorry, so this I, is just... sorry, this is Rima. Show me over at CDC. Okay, okay, Rima. All right, great. Thank you. Yep, I got it. <clears throat> Thank you, Rima. Yeah, I'll actually reach out to you. Okay, great. Thanks for your thanks for your tips, though. Sure. Anyone else? Nope. 
Okay. Um, oh, that slide is wrong. The next meeting is not March 14th. Today is March 14th. The next meeting, I believe, is April 11th at 9 a.m. Um, so um, please look out for the meeting notes from today, and then we'll have a agenda and save the date for the April 11th meeting. Um, if you have something you're working on or a project or study that you feel you know would make a good presentation, please um, let me know, and I'd be happy to schedule you for um, a meet an upcoming meeting. Um, so yeah. Um, with that, I hope everyone stays safe today. Uh, and if you like snow, enjoy the snow. And we'll see you next month. Thank you, Jim. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Yeah. Uh...